I was shocked to hear it because apparently the Women's March organizers accused of anti-Semitism have basically admitted it. That's my understanding from, we got a couple stories here. Daily Wire, uh, the New York Times wrote an expose, a story about what's going on with the Women's March. Apparently there was like a woman involved at the highest levels of the, of the Women's March happened to be Jewish and, and left or was kicked out or something over anti-Semitism. The reason this is so crazy is that, okay, so for those that aren't familiar, not too long ago, a story came out from Tablet Magazine accusing the Women's March of, of being anti-Semitic and working with the Nation of Islam. I posted about this rather furious. I was, out, I, I was angry because I really can't stand racism. I, I, look, I don't like hate speech. I don't like racism, but I'm left libertarian. So I agree, like, say your thing. Let me try and convince you. Otherwise, I'm not going to force you to, to change. I'm going to try my best to be compassionate and reasonable. But when you have the Women's March, which is supposed to be on the left, and the people at the top are identitarian anti-Semites. Well, now you've got me extremely angry because you're supposed to be the ones fighting against this. A lot of people said to me, oh, this is a smear job, a take piece. None of this is true. Unfortunately for those people, it is true. The New York Times confirms it. Let's just read the, the first part of the story before I jump over to the, the Daily Wire. They say, within days of Donald J. Trump's election, a diverse group of women united by their concern about the incoming administration gathered at a restaurant in New York to plan a protest march in Washington. They had seen the idea floating on Facebook and wanted to turn it into a reality. The unity did not last long. Vanessa Rubel, a Brooklyn-based activist, said she told the group that her Jewish heritage inspired her to try to help repair the world. But she said the conversation took a turn when Tamika Mallory, a black gun control activist, and Carmen Perez, a Latina criminal justice reform activist, replied that Jews needed to confront their own role in racism. The women who gathered that night would go on to organize one of the biggest protests in American history. Remarkable not just for its size, but for its inclusive nature, apparently except for Jews. The event on January 21st, 2017 inspired thousands of women who had never been involved in politics before to pour their energy into helping Democrats win elections this fall. But the divisions apparent at the very first meeting continue to haunt the Women's March organization as charges of anti-Semitism are now roiling the movement and overshadowing plans for more marches next month. Mrs. Rubel was pushed out of the organization shortly after the march, and she now asserts that her Jewish identity played a role. She went on to help found an organization called March On, which supports local women activists. The rift is now so dire that there will be two marches on the same day next month on the streets of New York, one led by the Women's March Group, which is being billed as being led by women, women, as being led by women of color, and another group affiliated with March On that is stressing its denunciation of anti-Semitism. All right, let's jump. We'll, we'll, maybe we'll come back to this, but let's read because the breakdown from the Daily Wire gets specific. The story from the Daily Wire says women's march leader, she does accuse Jews of being white supremacists. If there was any doubt about the anti-Semitism of some of the leaders of the women's march, it's dissipating fast. In a New York Times article published on Sunday, when asked about a report that they had discussed the issues of Jewish women and their initial meeting days after President Trump's election, two of the leaders, Tamika Mallory and Carmen Perez, admitted that they had, despite their claims in an early report in Tablet Magazine, that included this denial. It says, To this day, Mallory and Bland deny any such statements were ever uttered, either at the first meeting or at Mallory's apartment. There was a particular conversation about how white women had centered themselves and also around the dynamics of racial justice and why it was essential that racial justice be a part of the women's rights conversation, remembered Bland. But she and Mallory insisted it never had anything to do with Jews. Well, let's read on. Then the New York Times spoke to Mallory about the meetings. She uttered a statement that might as well, that might well be taken as an indictment of Jews themselves for white supremacist attacks on them saying, since that conversation, we've all learned a lot about how while white Jews as white people, uh, wait, you said, okay. Since that conversation, we've all learned a lot about how while white Jews as white people uphold white supremacy, all Jews are targeted by it. White Jews uphold white supremacy and causes problems for all Jews. Let me just tell you what she's saying. She's saying specifically that they're like Jews of color and it's, the, and it's the color aspect that they're being negative, uh, negatively targeted because white Jews are upholding white supremacy. One of the original leaders of the Women's March, Faye Rubel, who is Jewish, was jettisoned soon after the, the initial march. As the Times reported, she then started uh, March On. Rubel had claimed the, at the initial meeting, Mallory and Perez told her that Jews had been heavily involved, in, uh, heavily involved people in the slave trade, bewildered by the accusation, 
Rubel Googled the claim and found that it had been promulgated by the anti-Semitic and racist preacher Louis Farrakhan in his book, The Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews, a book which Henry Louis Gates Jr., a Harvard professor who was black, termed the Bible of the New Anti-Semitism. Perez and Mallory denied the slave trade had ever been mentioned. Rubel also asserted that one of the leaders of the movement told her, we really couldn't center Jewish women in this or we might turn off groups like Black Lives Matter. My God! <laughs> Hard for me to read. Mallory's remarks about Jews being white supremacists and the movement's apparent anti-Semitism drew plenty of criticism. So we have uh, Seth Mandel said, the women's march grappling with whether to erase Jews' entire identity for the purpose of strict racial categorization is itself a good example of anti-Semitism. Also a bold display of how leftist intersectionalism is unavoidably anti-Semitic. Here is a women's march co-founder and leader who has repeatedly voiced anti-Semitism telling the New York Times in a prepared statement that Jews are responsible for their own deaths at the hands of modern day Nazis. That's what they claim. Since that conversation, we've all learned a lot about how, uh, that's, they're basically re uh, reading the statement. Hen Mazig, uh, Mazig said, Nazis killing us because we aren't white, women's march attacking us because we uphold white supremacy. Isn't it funny? Isn't it funny how there are different racial identity groups, Jews being one, Asians being one, mixed race people being another, that are accused of both being white supremacists while also being marginalized, depending on which opinion you are willing to espouse. And this is why I absolutely detest all of this so much. It is hypocrites. It is people who are lying, cheating, and stealing to get power and manipulating you for their own racial identity power. That's the truly, that's the most terrifying thing about it. They don't care about marginalized groups. They care about putting their group on top. The Reagan Battalion said, Sarsour and Mallory are grappling with the Jewish question. That's insane. I cannot believe this. Let's go back to the New York Times story and, and we'll read on. They say that Miss Mallory, meanwhile, Stamika Mallory, who is now co-president of the Women's March, had been criticized for attending an event by Louis Farrakhan, the leader of the Nation of Islam, who has been widely reviled for making anti-Semitic remarks. Miss Mallory has called Mr. Farrakhan the GOAT or greatest of all time on social media. Isn't it fascinating how no matter how much evidence comes out, you have activists defending these groups. That when I made posts about the initial tablet magazine story, which basically every mainstream journalist was saying, this is legit. People were saying, this is a hit piece, it's a lie. Oh, it's fake news when it's about you, but the 98 plus whatever percent stories about Trump are not fake news. Now you understand why Trump talks about fake news all the time. I certainly don't think every story about Trump is fake news, but I do recognize the Trump bump phenomenon. But isn't it funny? How many of these people who claim that Trump is making things uh, problematic for the press by saying these things now do the exact same thing and accuse Jewish women who have been victimized by this mentality, by this anti-Semitism of lying? Oh, it's not true. They're just, it's just a hit piece. They're smearing these people. Yeah, well, now they admit it. Now what? And man, this stuff sickens me. The accusations of anti-Semitism, which were outlined in an article this month in Tablet, an online Jewish magazine, have prompted some women to reconsider their support for the group. I gotta say, I will be... I will be shocked to see the Women's March have support. This other group, March On, I'm interested to see what they do. Because they're, look, I don't care what your politics are so long as you, 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 you denounce certain things, right? I'm not willing, look, you, by all means, believe what you want to believe. You want to be an anti-Semite? You want to be Women's March Pro? Go ahead and do it. I'm just not going to associate with you. I don't want to be involved in that kind of, you know, fringe nonsense. And it's hateful in my opinion, okay? I have no problem talking with people or interviewing people, but I'm going to go mind my business and not be near you. Because my friends, as, as much to the, the, to the dismay of many of the Antifa types, my, my friends are all lefty types, like democratic socialists, you know, bordering out. Like I, I was a Bernie supporter. Who do you think my friends are? There are certain people I'm not particularly interested in being friends with. I'll, I'll say this though. You're a conservative, you're a Trump supporter. Yeah, no problem. I got friends who are Trump supporters. There's a difference between moderate, regular people who are conservative and liberal and fringe extremists who are anti-Semites. That's different. So look, yeah, you're free to do so and I'm free to disassociate. Some Jewish women have announced on social media that they will not attend the mass protests in Washington on January 19th being organized by the Women's March group. Last month, Teresa Shook, a white woman for, from Hawaii, who created the first Facebook page proposing a march, called for the group's leaders, who include Miss Mallory and Perez, to step down. Yes, it's time for change. The point I want to make before is, I do the march. You want to march for a women's issue, you want to march and protest Trump, by all means, do it. You know, uh, free speech and all that, fantastic. You want to march behind 
anti-Semites who lie and support this kind of fringe extremism? Yeah, well, that makes you a bad person, okay? I'm not going to necessarily fault all the people who are blindly following and not realizing what they're doing, but at this point, with the New York Times confirming, basically, uh, Tablet's findings, you have no excuse at this point to support these anti-Semites. None. None at all. Rachel O'Leary Carmona, Chief Operating Officer of the Women's March Group, cast the controversy as the growing pains of a new organization. Are you joking? That is struggling to build a diverse coalition. She said steps were being taken to ensure that Jewish women felt welcome, including giving women's march leaders education about anti-Semitism and adding Jewish women to the organization's unity principles, which highlight groups that are considered especially vulnerable. Oh, I see. So what you're saying is if, if you're Jewish, don't worry, you're going to march behind these, these anti-Semites and it's going to be okay because of their unity principles. No, no, that's, that's absurd. If any of these people organizing this group had any integrity, they would disavow immediately and say, you know what? The ideas, the core ideas outside of the, of the extremist nonsense can live on under a new name. And that's what at least one of the women has apparently tried to do. And the other organizers should denounce the anti-Semitism and say the Women's March group doesn't need to be the brand by which people express their opinions because it has been tainted. I don't see why it's so hard to just say, you know what? We're going to do the same thing, but we're going we're gonna to remove these people we're going we're gonna to do it. You, you, by all means, you keep women's march. Do march on and, and get rid of the anti-Semitism, please. Other than that, I have no idea how people can, can sleep at night defending this or even asking Jewish people to march behind them, no matter what they say, no matter what apology they give. They denied it at first. They have no remorse. And you think these people are going to change their opinions overnight with your unity principles? That's absurd. Ms. Mallory and Ms. Perez say that they categorically, categorically condemn anti-Semitism. And that when they asked Miss Rubel to leave the group, it had nothing to do with her being Jewish. Oh, it was just a coincidence that the anti-Semitic uh, anti conspiracy theorists want to remove the one Jewish person from their group. Sure, it's, it's just a coincidence. But they acknowledge that the role of Jewish women was discussed in that first meeting. So it's confirmed, okay? We know these people have praised Farrakhan. We know what they stand for, what they believe, and what they've done. And it's time to disavow, okay? I don't understand why it was conservatives for the longest time saying, hey, man, these are probably bad people. And the left said, oh, no, it's fine. You know that these people knew about this. They knew about this. Some of the organizers knew full well what they were saying, and they said nothing. That's why I find the whole organization at this point to be disgusting. You are, you are convincing good people who have, who have honest opinions. They just want to go out and march and express their opinions. They're, 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 they're God-given right in this country and protected by the First Amendment are now being tricked into marching behind a group that either is anti-Semitic or is willing to cover for anti-Semites. That, in my opinion, is disgusting. So you know what? I'm going to leave it there. I think, I think I've said enough. And, and at this point, I just don't think there's an excuse to support this kind of stuff. More videos to come. Stick around. They're on my YouTube channel. I'll see you in a minute.